about today here at the Easter Pines Church of Christ. We're here today to pump you up. Not <laughs> physically, but we're here today to pump you up spiritually. And pump you up with the Word of God. We uh, are in the process of coming to a new year where we are going to be signing up for our ministry teams. We have several ministry teams here. We have the Mercy Ministry Team, which is kind of an outreach team, which is probably one of our most active teams that we have that's out there. We have an evangelism team that comes up with ways and, and programs in which to... Uh, to reach out to the community and show people uh, the love of Christ and to, to reach the lost. We have youth ministry, children's ministry. We have all these different ministry teams, building ministry, grounds ministry, all these teams that are here for the sole purpose of coming together to build up the body of Christ. Having the members come together so that we can pump each other up, encourage and edify each other, and to fulfill the mission that we have that God has given to us. And the reason why we exist. And so if you have your scriptures, I'd like for you uh, to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the church at Corinth had a problem. Uh, they had several different problems. We talk about we want to be a church of the New Testament. We do not want to be a church like Corinth. We want to learn from Corinth, learn from the mistakes that were there and the way in which they were rebuked and told that they were doing wrong and then not be that way. They were haughty people. They were, uh, some of them in there, they were all about who was better than who. Who was higher than who. They wanted to receive glory for themselves and they wanted to be seen amongst themselves. Kind of like uh, Diotrephes in the Bible. The Bible talks about Diotrephes. And Diotrephes was a man who came together he wanted to be seen by men. He died no longer wanted to glorify God. He wanted to be seen by men. And he wanted his glory and his praise and his honor. And as a result, he was exiled uh, from the church because there's no place for us anybody in the church who wants to glorify themselves. And so you have uh, this situation going on in court. You have in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You have some there say, hey man, I was baptized by Apollos. That's nothing, man. That's nothing. I was baptized by Cephas. That's nothing. I was baptized by this guy. The Apostle Paul said, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of them. Because you missed the whole point. And he was telling them they missed the whole point. That it's all about Christ. It's all about Jesus. It's all about building up the body. Well then, in the early time, they had these spiritual gifts that were there. The gift of speaking in tongues. The gift of doing miracles. The gifts of discernment. All these different gifts were available in the New Testament times for the sake of propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, that's what the church is about. The church has always been about propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. We make no shame about it. And, and there's some that come in and think it means something else. It's all about sharing Jesus Christ. That's why we have out there on the sign, Church of Christ. Not Church of DJ Maxey. Not Church of anybody, any other man or any other person. It is the Church of Christ. His church, His kingdom, His local body. And that's what Paul is pointing out here. It is about Jesus. And they had these gifts. But then they got to say, my gift's better than your gift. I'm, I, I'm more important in the eyes of God. And I'm more important in this church here in Corinth than you are. Because my gift is better than your gift. And the Bible says they were puffed up. They probably were puffed up. They were proud of the fact of what they had and the gifts and the abilities that came from God in the first place. And they didn't acknowledge that. But they thought it came from themselves and their own knowledge. They puffed themselves up. And then they started to tear each other down. And it was destroying the church. And Paul said, no, no. That's not the way it's supposed to be. He said, we're the body of Christ. And as a body, there is diversity in the body. There's diversity that's in the body, but with the diversity, there is to be unity, is what Paul teaches. And so there can be unity with diversity. And here's the first thing Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, if you want to read along with me, the first three verses. He, said, he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now Paul said this straight, starting 
teach them about the body of Christ. And he started to teach them about what the purpose of ministry is, what the purpose of gifts are. Now, I used to be uh, director of recruitment at Bluefield College of Evangelism in Bluefield, West Virginia. Bluefield College of Evangelism, at the time that I went there, attended there, and graduated, I had uh, transferred. I was married in a different place in my life. I was more mature because I got married. Right, Carl? That's what happened. You get more mature. So I got more mature because I was married. So I went to... Um, it's that fuzzy thing. That thing never stays on, but you find it everywhere. I found it earlier in the back of the church. I was like, there's my fuzzy thing. And uh, he, didn't put it on, he didn't put it on very well. Just kidding. I think it's because I snorted out of my nose and the wind hit it. And but, but I was there at Bluefield, and uh, we mainly, Bluefield had focused on non-traditional students. That means ones who were maybe married, a little bit older in life, a different stage. They didn't focus a whole lot on the traditional student. Well, I graduated from there. I was in youth ministry. They, they called me up. I went. They asked me. They said, we'd like to start uh, transitioning a little bit and start reaching out to some of the traditional students. We would like to get these ones that are coming right out of high school who desire to go into ministry. And we'd like for you to recruit these students for us. So I thought, I said, okay, I'll do it. So I looked out and started recruiting. And I was recruiting these young guys coming up there. And then they put me in charge of these young guys because they didn't know how to handle it. They were like, man, we never had anything like this. Because now you, a 17, 18 year old boy, is in a different stage of his life than a 25, 35, even 45 year old man. You, you, got, a guy, you got a guy up here who, uh, 17, 18 year old, whose daddy's, daddy's paying for college. He's sent him to college. He's got his car. He's got all his expenses. He's there to go to school, but then to have a good time. And then you've got old boy who sold his farm in Indiana, uh, 100 and some odd acres in Indiana, sold his house, brought his four kids to the Bluefield College of Evangelism to go to school. He's focused strictly on school. you got different needs of it. But these guys, they like to have a good time, like this, so we we're trying to do different events for them and try to keep them where they would uh, they'd enjoy their college experience and the social aspects of it. But sometimes they would get bored. And one night I get a phone call. It was from the Bluefield Police Department. Bluefield, Virginia Police Department. You had Bluefield, Virginia, Bluefield, West Virginia. They decided to go across state lines to commit a crime. And uh, they called me up. And they said, they said, are you sir? I said, yes, I am. They said, we have, uh, we have a fellow by this name and this name in custody. Do you know who they are? I said, I sure do. And I said, I'll be right there. <clears throat> I go down there. I call one of the other guys on, who's on staff. We ride there. <laughs> and, uh, and what had happened was they were riding around trying to find something to do. And they rode by the local Kroger. Kroger was closed, but they rode behind Kroger. And they have a ladder that comes down. They figured the ladder was down for a reason, for them to climb up on top of Kroger. So they climbed up on top of Kroger. Uh, just for your information, if you ever decide to do this, the one in Bluefield, Virginia has alarms on top of it. Somehow they tripped an alarm. And so the police come. When they see it, they're up on top, so they have a good view. They see the police coming from a distance. And so what they do is, uh, one, uh, Wayne was one of them. <laughs> Wayne grew up in my hometown. Uh, so he was, he was street sad. Uh, Wayne looks down, sees that a dumpster is open. Wayne jumps from the top of Kroger into the dumpster, covers himself with trash, and shuts the lid. <laughs> if you don't want to get caught by police, yeah, you just might stink on us, but it's not a bad plan. <laughs> so Wayne is in the dumpster, covered with trash. <clears throat> Old boy from Grundy, Virginia, he's not a street sack. He panics. He starts coming back down the ladder. Well, by that time, the police are on him. And the police are on him, and they had the cars there, and they're shining the light on him, and they tell him to stop where he was. Uh, I guess not put his hands up, because that would be bad on the ladder. But stop where he was. And he, the first thing out of his mouth, Wayne said the first thing out of his mouth, that he heard, Freeze! Stay where you are! All he heard was, Aaron, go. He's in the dumpster. <laughs> Ran him out right there. He's in the dumpster. Wayne's under the tray. Wayne's like, really? <laughs> he said, you can see Wayne waiting a little while. And next thing you know, the lid opens up. There's flashlights in there. Guns pulled. And they're like, oh man, I got it. I got nothing. 
<laughs> he's got his hands up. So Wayne's in there smelling like trash in a uh, thing. And uh, he said, I think you would get a good chance to hide. And, um, but you know, right away, man, this guy was like, boom, there he is in the dumpster. Everything we do, whatever talent we have, whatever gift we have, whatever God has blessed us with automatically, right from the get-go, it needs to say, boom, it needs to point to Jesus. And he receives all the praise, honor, and glory for what he is doing through us. And that's what Paul is teaching them. That it's about confessing Jesus Christ is Lord. And so when the gift of the Spirit is truly within you, then you can't help but confess Jesus Christ is Lord. But when you find yourself all the time, it's about me. It's about me. Or I this, I don't like that. I don't like this. I this, I that. You have an I or a me theology. And that's a bad theology to have. You're going to find yourself in trouble. You're going to find yourself at odds with people within the body of Christ and God's people. You're going to find yourself at odds with God, and that's a bad place to be. We need to make sure that what everything we do coincides with and what I'm doing is what I'm doing. Glorifying God in heaven and His Son, Jesus Christ, and pointing people to Jesus. And then verse 4 says, Therefore, our diversities of gifts are the same Spirit. There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. He goes on and says, For the one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another gift of healings, by the same Spirit, to another gift of working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing each one individually as He wills. Okay, but I want to go back to verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. The profit of all. One of the things that uh, Jackie and I do, we work with Woodman, and it's one of the things we do, one of the things they teach us from the get-go is that what you need to teach people is why Woodman? Why go with Woodman? There's hundreds of other companies that do the same thing that we do, but why? what sets Woodman apart from others? And so we have a brochure that says member benefit. And that's where we start. We're well, going to get benefit. Here's your member benefit. People want to automatically pair it up. Because you want to know what's in it for me. What benefit can I get? So we've already pointed out with the gifts that the gifts of God, the gifts, of, the gifts that God gives us, the gifts through the Holy Spirit, are to do what? Ultimately, the first one, to point people to Jesus. But then it says here that if we're doing it and we do it in the right way, then it's going to do what? It's going to profit everyone. So, when we do it the right way, then we will benefit from it. So we will get some benefit. It's not about me, but when I make it about the right thing, then I will benefit from it, and others in the kingdom of God will benefit from the, the gifts and the talents that are used in the kingdom of God and people doing ministry the right way. And that's what it's about. It's about building up, encouraging one another. I've shared uh, these things, several things before, but it's the idea of you, you, you go somewhere, I didn't get anything out of that today. I didn't get anything out of that. I dare say I've listened to more sermons than anybody in this room, no matter what your age is. I would put by the number of sermons that I've listened to up to anybody here. I'm not saying that to brag, it's just the fact of the matter. I've told before, I was born on a Sunday, I was in, I was in church the very next Sunday. I was born Super Bowl Sunday, 1972. Dallas Cowboys played Miami Dolphins. Dallas won 24 to 3. The nurses were arguing over what team I was going to play for. <laughs> I came out. I was, I was hairy like Esau. I had big shoulders, a big head, and a little stumpy body. <laughs> I'm going to be a running back. They said, all right, who else going to play for? But the very next Sunday, I was in church. I grew up listening to the sermons. I grew up going to revivals. And my dad taking me from one revival to the next revival. And going here and going there and going to this seminar and this seminar. I went to Bible college. I've been to three or four different Bible colleges. I've been to the chapel services that are there and listened to their services. I've gone to uh, these family camps year after year after year. And there's sermon after sermon after sermons after sermons that are there. Doesn't make me any better than anybody else. But I... 
out of those sermons and out of those things, I get the benefit of growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I just made that up because I'm not sure where I was going. Um, that's pretty good. <laughs> but the bottom line is, we benefit, we build each other up and encourage each other when we use the gifts that God has given to us. Okay, it's not... It, and, and so, what I, what I was getting at was, we get what we put into it. And I've listened to a lot of those sermons and those things, and I've never fallen asleep during a sermon. I've come close, but I've never fallen asleep during a sermon. And I've always gone into a sermon or to a lesson with the mindset, I'm going I'm to get something out of this. What is this guy going to teach me? What's this person going to teach me today that I don't know, already know? Because sometimes as a preacher, it's easy to go in and to be critical. And I would have said that. I would have said this. I would have done that. But I go in. There was one guy who preached, man. He preached one time. I heard one sermon. A guy preached all the way through Psalm 119. That's the longest book in the Bible. It's got like 176 verses in it. And he preached that whole chapter. And I was in there like this. But I, was, I, put my, I had to put my dicks up. And I was like Mike Tyson. I had a couple of blows. And got it. <laughs> I got back in the box, stood up, and I made it through. I listened to the whole thing. Then I listened to another guy on Rap 20 in Princeton, West Virginia. I went there that one. Remember that? We went there with Dan and all there. We sat in there. They said, turn your Bible to Zephaniah. I didn't even know it existed. And, uh, <laughs> and so we turned to Zephaniah. He went through the whole book of Zephaniah. I was like, but I got something out. I mean, we were in there, and I was like, I got something out of this. I learned something that I didn't had before. And so the idea is, is because I've heard it years ago, you get what you put into it. You know, as a child, when, when, you, when I played baseball, you're going to get what you put into this practice. Uh, you're going to get it in the game. If you put it in here, put the hard work, it's going to pay off. It's like working out and bodybuilding. If you work hard at it, you lift it, you do the things you're supposed to do and eat the way you're supposed to eat, you're going to benefit from that. You're going to get the results that you want out of that. You get what you put into it. And the same thing with, uh, with worship. Same thing with, uh, with our ministries and with our gifts. You know, people are like, I didn't get anything out of that. I didn't get it. What did you put into it? How did you prepare your heart and your mind to come into worship? How did you prepare your heart and mind to go into this ministry and to perform this ministry? And sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes we have to make ourselves. We have to make ourselves do some ministry sometimes, don't we? And then we find out and then when we make ourselves you know this is the right thing I need to do. You know, we want to get to that point always that we don't have to, we get to. But sometimes we have to make ourselves say, I'm going to be involved in this. It's like, uh, it's like sometimes I go into places and I start thinking, well, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to bless this person. Because my presence in here, I'm going to bless this person. And then I'm the one that ends up being blessed as a result of, of, of doing ministry. It's like you know, recently I went to see Guy Ward in the hospital. And all Guy Ward wanted to talk about when I went in there, man, he didn't talk about his illness and all these things. He kept saying, hey, things will be all right, man. He said, I'm going to be fine. He said, it's all good, man. He said, because I made the greatest decision I ever made. And he said, that was last week when I, uh, when, I, um, when I was saved. He said, when I made Jesus Christ Lord and I was baptized into Christ, he said, man, that was the best decision I made. He said, so I got, all, I got everything right. He said, everything else is going to come together. And so I went in there to encourage this guy, and this guy encourages me. As a result of that. But we have to put something in. We have to go with these mindsets. So what are you putting in to the worship? What are you putting into the ministry? We put it into the ministry here at the Eastern Pines Church of Christ. What ministry? You've all you notice I use the term ministry. I'm not big on the word committee. Committee is what the business world has. Committees is what they have when I work in the uh, workplace. It's not a committee. We're not, we're not that type. We're on a ministry. And that's what Paul says. Paul says in, in uh, Corinthians, there are a variety of ministries, is what he said. And that's what we have. We have ministries. Service to glorify and honor our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. But he talks about this. It benefits us. But then he says, here, if, we, if you read on down, I'm going to encourage you to read all the rest of the chapter. I'm just going to read a few verses starting in verse 12. He says, for the body is one and has many members, but all members... Of that one body, being many are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we're all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. 
For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not a body, is it therefore not of the body? If the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? Or all these different things you know, that it talks about. That if, they, if, if we were all one ear, if we were all one eye, all this. It talks about the body complements each other. The body of Christ complements. When we get into this body building, and we complete one another. It's like a marriage relationship. Dee and I are total opposites from each other. We've been together over 25 years. Dating and marriage. 23 years, some odd months of marriage since May. And so we've been together for that long. And we've learned over the years, you know, God put us together for real, but we complement one another. We complete each other. She is sometimes is more worried about things than I am, more concerned about some things than I am. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. Have you seen the check account? When it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You're exactly right. I can't argue with that one. When it's gone, it's gone. This so ain't been gone yet. <laughs> ain't never been gone. I don't worry about that stuff, stuff like that. Because I'm total opposite. I don't worry about things. I don't sit around worrying and concern myself with things such as that and other things. I ain't got time for it. I got most of it. I got pain for that. What'd you say? Uh, she said I worry about that matter. <laughs> But we have learned that, that she's taught me over the years. Even, I, I'm not aware. She used to say when I was young, she said, you're going to live to be 120 years old. Nothing worries you. How can you just sit there in that chair and just sit there and not worry about that? I said, ain't nothing to do about it. Get out of the way. I'm watching this game. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but over the years, we've learned. We've complimented. She has now taught me there are some things that I probably need to be concerned about. There's some things in life that I need to be concerned about, some things in life that may require a little bit of, uh, of attention. And then I've taught her in some way that there's some things you don't need to worry about. It's okay to jump on the back of a motorcycle and to ride going absolutely nowhere and it sinks dirty. Okay, it's fine. It's going to be dirty when we get back. And I said, the Lord might come back and then you clean the dish and then get chased by a motorcycle. <laughs> Don't make that sense. So she's learned, okay, it'll be back. It'll be here. And so we've learned some different things. And so we complete each other. And we, we, we balance each other out. And that's the way it works in the body. Not everybody can do everything that everybody else does. There's some that have different natural talents that God has given them and they can use and praise God for it. I've talked before about these musicians. You know, our first service, these guys come together, uh, JP and Christy and Dee Dee and Tracy and then Jonathan and different ones that come in first service and nothing but the old hymns and it's beautiful. They play that piano. She plays that piano like a, like a, like a old, like an old Baptist body. You know, that Baptist <laughs> hymn, like, ding, you know, another way, you know what I'm talking about? It's just dancing. She's playing that thing. Huh? Doesn't she? I mean, it's dancing. I mean, it's good. I'm not saying that bad. Right. You are an old Baptist. Okay, right. So that's why you're not. But anyway. But no, she plays. Uh, she can play that band. She's playing that thing. And we're singing here. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Uh, standing on the promises. We sang that today. And we sing these different hymns and come together. And I'm like, man, that's just, that's awesome. And they're ready to play the piano. And then J.D.'s up there singing, standing on the promises. And then he goes from standing on the promises to up here where he's doing. Ear things falling out of his ear. Stuff in the back. <laughs> you know that a musician that was pointing to something? You know that?
I was watching them all this morning, man, and, and they would lead me to the throne of God, and I was, the songs, it was powerful. It was just one of those, I was, I was into it. I was like, man, this is, that's great. The talent that they had to be able to, to, to be, uh, to be well-rounded in their music and to do all the different things that they do and, and to be able to sing like that. And I can't sing a little. I might be able to sing a little bit here and there. Um, I do ride on my motorcycle now. I got speakers on there. And uh, so what, you'll hear me when I leave. Right when I pull up my phone, and every time I roll right here now, first song I listen to, I put it in. American boy. <laughs> Toby Keith. I probably had some Toby Keith and start rolling loud. I was singing that thing loud, and that loud was like, look tough too, don't worry. <laughs> and, uh, but. But I'm saying, but I'm not a, I'm not a slave. God hasn't given me the talent to lead in that way, to lead a worship service, to, to give me that natural talent, that natural ability, musical ability, to play a piano, play a guitar, to do these sorts of things. I thank God for them. I thank God for them. And what was happening in the early church is they would get jealous of each other. There was jealousy that was going on, and jealousies of the flesh. We learned that this morning in our family devotion time. It's interesting how they went together. It talks about what's of the flesh. Jealousy is of the flesh when we're jealous of somebody. And they talk about what the fruit of the Spirit is. And so I can see it and say, man, I wish I could play. I seem like that. They get the glory, all these things. But praise God for them and them using their talent that way. And using it for the glory of God, pointing us to Jesus. And benefiting myself. And hopefully they can benefit and they're encouraged as a result of seeing us sing worship and praise to God and their ability to do that. But there's some people in here who don't do those. There's things that go on unseen here that people don't know anything about. I mean, we walk in this building, some of us walk in, we come, we sit down, and we don't know all the different things that go on. Diddy's sipping on coffee right now. Diddy is the coffee queen. I'm just getting with that. She loves that coffee pot out there, buddy. She's always making coffee out there, and some of y'all benefit from drinking coffee. That's Diddy. Diddy loves it. Diddy even comes in, makes the coffee. Coffee just doesn't appear. We just don't walk in there. Boom, you got coffee. Somebody makes that coffee. Somebody makes sure that there's the French vanilla cream that's there. We're almost at And uh, <laughs> and make sure that you let me get it. Um, but you know, all those things that are that, that are uh, there. I, I think of Scott Pollard. He's not here today, they're in Ohio, I believe. But Scott Pollard comes in here, he's here at church probably about 7 30 every morning. Nobody knows that really. But Scott Pollard gets here around 7, 7 30 in the morning. He doesn't get paid for anything. He volunteers his time. He comes in. All the lights are usually on when I come in. He turns the air on. He unlocks all the doors. He does all the different things. And sometimes he makes the coffee. Started making some coffee. And Didi, Didi came in and said, Oh man, I miss Scott. <laughs> all because she had that coffee. <laughs> no, but, uh, but see, you know, those little things we don't realize. The Lord's Supper communion. Past two weeks, Miss Erla, uh, has, Miss Erla gets the communion ready every Sunday. Nobody else in here messes with that. Miss Earl does. Miss Earl puts the cups in. She puts the juice in. She puts the bread in. She gets everything ready for me. Caleb is usually the one that comes in and puts it in the places that it needs to go. John Anderson then comes in after second service. He goes around. He puts all the baskets and puts everything in the proper place. And there's others that step in and do those things in time, but those are the ones that do it uh, a lot of the time. But Miss Earl now is making the bread. The bread's homemade uh, communion bread now. She started that a couple weeks ago. I was in my office and I said, you know what? I said, and I said, uh, I said, I know some churches that make communion bread. I said, I was at a church that made their communion bread. She said, really? You can make it? I said, I said yeah. I said, look like pie crust. <laughs> you know, I was like, look. So we got talking about it. She said, I'll research that. <laughs> Hour later, she comes in with a batch of communion bread. She said, not the best. Try it. I said, that's pretty good. And I said, I'm not going to talk about what communion tastes like. I said, that's better than that styrofoam we were eating. I thought we had bought some packet peanuts. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, it's hard to complain about communion. And, uh, but anyway, she's making that now. Saving us, saving us. She said, I think I'm going to save us about $25 or $30 a month by making the bread. Everybody knows that, but that's a little thing that's attached. You've got to give the, those things you want to do and so many other things that she does. And when the communion is that, Tommy does. He did the communion meditation this morning. He'll get the communion together. He'll make it. He'll do the difference. I can go on and on. The ones that work with our children in the back. 
Your know, Caleb's back there right now. He's probably got to play. I, I walk by and kids everywhere. Kids are wild with that. You ever notice that? No. I was with him in that. Uh, I, I taught him that uh, Tuesday night. I taught him Tuesday night of uh, revival. Because I don't like to ask anybody anything to do that I want to do. I'm not going to do that. If, if I'm going to do it, if I can, I'll do it. So Diddy and I took that class. I went in there and run around wild, throwing a ball off the, off the ceiling, running around wild. I said, Hold on! I said, Y'all sit down. They were all looking at me. I said, I ain't lying. I said, Sit down. I said, This ain't public school. <laughs> DJ school. I said, you better sit down. I said, make a circle. They were like, I said, y'all know what a circle is? I said, I don't know what they teach you in Common Core. I said, all I know about this circle is this one right here. This circle. I said, make one. They made a circle. I said, now take that ball and roll it, DJ. They were rolling. They were rolling, DJ. I said, see how calm they I said, don't touch each other. I said, they touch us somewhere down the line, touching each other. They can't pop. They're always touching each other. I said, quit touching each other. That's right. That's one day I grew up. I get slapped back in the head. I touch my brother. I touch somebody in the Slap me in the back of the head. So we got up and said, I ain't going to hit nothing. Don't worry. I ain't going to hit your kid. But I'm scared. And uh, I told my kid one time we were, Olivia's talking about it. She's going to be at school. She works at the after school care at the YMCA. And we were having these discussions. You remember that time in 1990? I went, I volunteered to work with the four and five year old kids at the gospel rally. Remember that? And Dee Dee, because Dee Dee was going to be in there. And Dee Dee's pretty. And so uh, we weren't naked at that time, and I was like, I'm going to go in there. <laughs> so I went into the, we may have been kind of liking each other. You liked me from the first time you saw me. And, uh, <laughs> but I, took, I went in there and uh, went in there working with these kids. And I'm back there. I was like, I don't want to be in here, man. Because I wanted to be a preacher. I always wanted to be a preacher. And I was like, I can work with kids. They, they're back there trying. They're being real nice. There's this one level going buck white. And he was like, ah! you know, running all around, moving them back and forth. And I was like, I used to be that kid. So I know how to deal with it. Because I was that kid. Usually you cry chop in the neck. That's what I got. But uh, I grew up in a military area. But, uh, but they, the kid was running around. And uh, they were trying to, hey, come here, sit down. You want some goldfish? Sit down. I went over. And DJ, DJ. I went over. I said, listen here. I said, look at me. I said, look in my eyes. I said, look in my eyes. Look in my eyes. Look in my eyes. I said, you're some kind of bad. I said, I said, oh, you probably don't understand the word I'm saying. I said, but there's about 600 people out there right now. You understand people? I said, 600 people. I said, you probably don't understand. I said, that's a lot of people. I said, I'm going to take you out there in front of them, uh, all those people. I'm going to take you on stage. I said, I'm going to call your mom and daddy out there. I'm going to whip you in front of them. His eyes got, his eyes got about that big. I said, you want that here? I said, then you better sit down. You better be quiet. You better listen to the two ladies. You understand me? <laughs> he went over, sat down. He sat down next to him under a table. And Dee's like, "You scared him?" I said, "Be quiet." I said, "Tell you, he'll be fine." So it happened to me many times. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I appreciate the ones in the back there with the kids. I mean, there's like 30, 30 to 40 kids back there right now. And then you have the nursery, and you have the we worship, and you have all these things that are back there. And these people working with them and planting the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ in their life. Praise God for making the body complete. Because some of us don't have that gift, don't have that ability, but the ones that work back there, they may not want to do something else. And on and on I could go how we complete each other, complete the body of Christ for the sole purpose of pointing people to Jesus. What are you doing to help make this body complete here? Because when you serve here and you minister here with the right attitude, but it's not about me, it's to point people to Jesus. You'll benefit from it. It'll make the body complete. It'll make this community more complete. And it will be helping out expand, to expand the church universe. But the first thing you ultimately have to do is ask yourself, do I truly with all my heart believe that Jesus is the Christ of something that we If you don't, that's where you start. Have I truly made Him the Lord of my life where everything I do is to point people to Him? And everything I say is to glorify and to honor Him. And you start by believing, repenting, confessing, and being baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and the gift of God's Holy Spirit. And that's the start. And then you grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. And you find out what your ministry is. 
And you begin to serve in that area. And serve as Jesus served. So Jesus came to do ministry. He said in Mark 10, 45, Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. We're to follow his example and serve. Where are you today in the walk of Christ? If Jesus is not Lord, I want to encourage you and challenge you to make Jesus Christ Lord in your life. If you need to come back to Him, then come back. Rededicate your life to the Lord. Swallow your pride and say, I've been living for myself. I've been doing things for myself. I haven't been ministering in church like I should. I need to come back to Jesus. And we'll be here. We'll pray for you. I've been there. I'm no better than you are. I've been there. I've had to do those things and humble myself before God and come back to Him. Maybe you just need prayer. Maybe you're going through a tough time and a hard time in prayer. You need just somebody to talk to, some spiritual counseling, whatever it is. We want to be here for you. I'll be up here. Our pastors, our shepherds, our elders will be up here with me as well. And if there's some kind of spiritual need that you need uh, this morning, then you come after I pray and as we sing our song of invitation. God, thank you so much for today. And for the opportunity to open your word and study your word and to see what you would have us to do here at Eastern Pines. We want to be build up the body here. We want to build up the body spiritually. We know that when we build it up spiritually, it's going to grow numerically. To see the new people that are coming and to have the growth that's coming and, and all the time, every week, we praise, we praise you for that. Thank you for sending people to us. But I just ask that um, that you'll take each other from where we are to where we need to be today. You'll help us understand the importance of ministry. Understand what your church is really about. It's about your son. And no one can be saved except through him. And it's our sole purpose to propagate that message through using our gifts, our talents, and our ministry. So God, at this time, if there's somebody who needs to come to you, come back to you, or whatever need that they have, I hope they have the boldness and courage to get right with you today. I lift this up in the name of Jesus. Amen. You stand when you come together. I did it for uh, the school. I'm Let's get a peek. Bye. Yeah, case. that's right. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. Using one Sunday, most time, maybe two, and chunk. Because most time, that's not all we want. Right. Take care, Jonathan. You sounded great. Thank you, sir. I appreciate everything. I really does. Did you that pass work? Uh, no, it didn't work. It didn't work? You get, it's, it's some combination of capital. Oh, I try to get the combination. I'm wondering if the O and the I aren't zero and one. No. And just written I'm going to come out here probably more and, and get that thing with you. Because I'm not going to be here Sunday, but I'm going to come home yeah. and make sure everything's all right. And then I'm going to be back. Well, I'm, I'm subbing today for Scott. He's supposed to have the month of October because of the wedding. We'll get it all figured out. I want to make sure y'all guys are work. I did, well, I would really like for he and I to figure it out together so I know what the heck to do when something like that goes down.